Hey Pete here for Studio Live today and welcome to yet another GarageBand Quick Jam where in just two minutes I'm going to tell you all about a feature here in GarageBand and by popular demand today I'll be looking at the often misunderstood world of compression. Let's go. Oh my god nobody's driving. That's right today we are going to talk about compression and I'm actually going to cheat here and make this a double episode because compression is one of those topics that needs a little more explanation. Now first of all what is compression? Now compression is not to be confused with compression of a file to reduce its size. Compression in the audio world means reducing the volume of peaks to create a more level volume for a particular track. Now you may be thinking I thought compression made things louder. Well yes it does because what we do is we reduce those peaks to get a level performance and then we raise up the overall gain or volume to create a nice level sound. Using compression, especially heavy compression, will reduce your dynamic range, which means that the loud and the soft parts of your track will be squished together and you won't get that nice dynamics in your sound. So be very careful that you don't over compress, especially instruments. Okay, let's get into it to access our compressor. We tap on our mixer icon here. And the first thing we have is the ability to use this dial to dial in some basic levels of compression. And if we tap on our microphone option up here for the audio recorder, you'll notice we have this compression knob over to the right. And if I turn that knob, that dial will also dial in compression. But we wanna access our advanced options. So I'm gonna tap on plugins and EQ. And now we can drop down here and actually change our compressor settings. Okay, now we're gonna go through what each of the individual compressor settings does and how we can use those to impact our sound. And first of all, I'm gonna play you this track with this lead vocal without any compression. Cars and the pubs used to thrill me. So at this point it doesn't sound bad, but it's definitely not right there and punchy and present in the mix. So let's look at some compressor options and see if we can get this vocal sounding better. Okay, firstly we need to turn on the compressor by tapping this button and making it blue. And our first setting here is the threshold. So this tells the compressor at what volume it should start compressing the signal. So anything from a very high volume, which means that only very strong loud peaks are actually going to be reduced. And if we dial this all the way down, it means a lot more compression is going to be applied because the volume doesn't have to reach a very high level before it will start compressing. Bars and the pubs used to thrill me with a couple of pints. The next setting is our ratio, which tells the compressor how much compression to apply once it reaches that threshold. Anything from very low right up to a very high amount of compression, which is really crushing or squashing the sound. I was happy to stay but the truth is there's nothing that I'd rather do. And you can see there when we have the ratio right up the top there, it's sounding quite unnatural and very crushed. So we don't want to have that sort of sound. We want to have something in between that's just going to make it present without being too overwhelming. Our attack setting tells the compressor how quickly to start compressing. So if we have this all the way down here, it means that as soon as those volumes peak over the threshold, it's going to start compressing. If we have a very long attack time, it means that the sound has to be very loud for a long time before it's going to actually start compressing. I'm drinking with you. Some people live for adventure. And the attack is often very subtle and hard to hear. If you have something like a drum, then it's going to be a lot easier to hear because that's obviously a very shorter sound and you're going to want to put the attack quite fast, otherwise the compressor will have no impact at all on your drum hits. We have our gain setting here and the reason for this is, as I said before, compression is actually reducing the overall volume. So sometimes what we need to do is actually dial in more gain to make sure that the track sits back in the mix. Some people need the bright flashing of lights. And finally, like a lot of our plugins, we have our mix dial. So we can mix anywhere from 0% up to 100% if we only want a partial amount of the compression applied. I'd rather sit back on a warm summer's night. And now that we have our compressor set, let's see how this is sounding in our mix. With a couple of pints, I was happy to stay. Okay, that's sounding pretty good to me. So let's now start with the compressor off and I'll turn it off and on and you'll be able to hear the difference the compression has made. Oh, the bars and the pubs used to thrill me. With a couple of pints, I was happy to stay. 
But the truth is there's nothing. There you go, you've got a nice upfront, punchy, present vocal. And the question a lot of people have with compression is can't I just turn the volume up? You can, what you're gonna find though is that you're gonna start peaking your volume level and you're not gonna get that even performance that you get from compression. You can use automation, but you're gonna spend a lot of time raising and lowering your volume. Compression does all of that hard, heavy lifting for you and means that you can have a nice sound that sits in your mix. And that is it for another GarageBand Quick Jam. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comment below, and I'll see you next time. Map, map.